have been to hundreds of football stadiums since I started this channel. Some have been big, some have been small, some have been old, some have been new, some have been beautiful and some have been abandoned. But in this video, I'm going to be taking you through seven unique, weird, bizarre, wonderful stadiums that you have to visit in your lifetime. There are many compilation videos on YouTube about the weirdest stadiums in the world. A lot of them will be using pictures from Google Images. People haven't actually been there, but they've compiled a list of some of the weirdest stadiums. I sadly haven't been to every corner of the world to see every single weird and unique stadium. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you my top seven of places that I've been using footage that I've taken from these seven grounds. I'll be giving you a few facts about them and tell you how I felt how I felt when I was there and what makes them so crazy and so unique. Starting off in the Netherlands is Sparta Rotterdam. Sparta Stadion Het Kasteel is the official name of the stadium and Het Kasteel means the castle in Dutch. It has a capacity of just over 11,000 people and when I got there I was just absolutely stunned by the sight of it. When I go to different countries I obviously go for games and stuff um, but yeah when I'm also there I like to research weird and wonderful stadiums see if I can make a couple of unique videos when I'm at these places and I just couldn't believe my eyes when I first saw the castle. I tried my hardest to get in this place when I was actually there um, but yeah I couldn't go for a game that they weren't playing at home when I was there and stadium tours as well they said they couldn't do any on the days that I was there too. I did say this in the video but then they reached out to me on Instagram the club and said that next time I'm there I'm able to go so yeah next time I'm in the Netherlands I've been a few times now for the channel so hopefully you'll see me go inside the castle very soon but as you can see from a few of these shots like the front of it doesn't even look like a stadium and that is one of the things that I like about it most it's hosted Olympics in 1928 it hosted a couple of football matches teams like Belgium and Chile in 1928 almost a hundred years ago now but I mean yeah just look at that you show me another stadium that looks as unique as that now in my opinion you could put most non-league stadiums on this list every non-league stadium is unique pretty much with the exception of a few obviously but I feel like non-league stadiums always have some unique charms and characters to them but this is the best non-league stadium that I have ever seen. It is the home of Almada AC in Portugal. And they play in, I think, the regionalized leagues of Portugal below the top two tiers, which I think the top two tiers are like their football league. And I did mention this when I was out there. I was actually due to see a game this day. I turned up to the stadium, not this one, a different one, a team in Lisbon who are due to play at home. Um, I was gonna go see them play, but when I got there, a couple of hours before kickoff, there was like nobody turning up for the game. And I was like, what is going on? Um, in very, very broken Portuguese of mine and broken English of a construction worker, he told me that they weren't playing at home. They were in fact playing in a neutral venue because of works to the stadium. So I went to Almada AC instead. And as you can see from some of these clips, it is in the shadows of Christ. It is in the shadows of one of the most famous tourist attractions that you can see in Portugal and in Lisbon specifically. You may have been to Lisbon and you may have been across the April the 25th bridge to the Statue of Christ. And whilst you were there, you may have completely missed that there was this beautiful non-league stadium just opposite. It has views of the water down to one side and views of Jesus to the other. It is absolutely sensational. When I was there, it was the weekend, like I said, I was meant to see another game, um, but the little cafe bar was open. It was just before 11 o'clock in the morning and I had to have a super box off the bloke in there. I had to celebrate that I'd actually got into this place. And as you can see, like this one is just an absolute stunner. It was sunny. Oh my God, you have to go. And I'm going to have to go back for a game, I feel like. But um, I mean, yeah, if you're going to go to Lisbon, your likely chances are that you're going to visit that Statue of Christ anyway. So you may as well go and see Almada AC whilst you're there as well. In no particular order, but third on this list is our first and only German edition to the list of unique stadiums that I've been to, and it is the home of St. Pauli. Now, firstly, and the first thing that sort of hits you when you go there is A, the political messaging, and B, the brown seats. These are two of the most unique things about this place, in my opinion, is like, yeah, all the political messages that are sort of around the stadium and stuff. I feel like for a lot of the fans, 
it's less about the football in a lot of ways and more about what the club stands for and a part of like being and being a part of sort of what they are um, sort of off the pitch, if that makes sense. But the Milan Tor Stadium or Stadion, as it's obviously known in Germany, is a cool place to go. And yeah, I think um, maybe like I just said about them not being too fussed about the football is due to the fact that they've sort of been second and third tier for a lot of their lives they've never won a major trophy um, and they are sort of overshadowed in footballing terms by their city rivals Hamburg although this year they are in the same division Hamburg are doing a lot better St Pauli is sort of mid-table I think but um, yeah as you can see look just some of these shots some of these like when you go there it's another one that sort of takes your breath away it's like am I actually in a stadium right now um, Sparta Rotterdam the castle you feel like could this be a stadium it doesn't seem like one from the outside Side. and even this place like I think I said when I was there it more feels like a concert venue than sort of a football stadium in a lot of senses the amount of stickers even in the dressing rooms like the dressing rooms don't feel like anything I've ever seen at any other stadium before especially in Germany where obviously they take their football so seriously and I guess some of the facilities of the clubs even in the Zweite Bundesliga the second tier are obviously really good as well um, I feel like I'm not saying that they're not good facilities here they're just very very different as you can see from a lot of these shots it holds just under 30,000 people 29 and a half thousand and from what I've heard from people who commented on this video and my other Hamburg videos is that the atmosphere is just meant to be sensational St Pauli an unbelievably unique stadium um, not for anything sort of architecturally different about it like we'll be getting onto with some of them in this list um, but just more for the fact that yeah brown seats political messaging and just doesn't even really feel like much of a football stadium at all the three I'll be speaking about at the end of this video, so the last three are very, very similar in a lot of ways. One's Scottish, one's Welsh and one's Portuguese. So stick around to that. Next up though is a stadium that looks more like something you would have seen in the UK prior to the Taylor Report coming in. The Taylor Report came in um, when obviously stadiums were very, very dangerous. There had been a lot of high profile disasters and um, clubs had to make their stadiums all seaters basically within England, Scotland, I think Wales and possibly Northern Ireland as well. Um, but this one is still, it still has a lot of terracing. I'm not sure about a lot of the rules around the Taylor Report to be honest, but um, yeah, from what I've heard, from people over in Northern Ireland. They didn't get a lot of money in the Taylor Report when other clubs within the UK did. But as you can see, look, I'm glad that this place hasn't had a lot of work done to it down the years. It does need a bit of TLC, of course it does. And you can see it's a little bit run down in places. However, as a football lover, as an enthusiast of these weird and wonderful stadiums, then Glen Torrens Oval in East of Belfast is just sensational. Apparently has a capacity of 26 and a half thousand people. I would love to see it packed out. I went to a game over there um, just recently, last week I think it was, um, and yeah, there was not as many people there. It was a midweek cold day and they weren't playing one of their big rivals. There wasn't a huge amount on the line when uh, on the game as well, but I mean, the stadium would have been packed by um, the ship workers from down the years, players would have been um, from the shipyards as well, the same shipyards that built Titanic as well. And this place was even bombed during the war, the Belfast Blitz in 1941. They destroyed parts of the grandstands, they destroyed uh, the pitch, they left a large crater in the pitch, did the German Luftwaffe. Luftwaffe, I think it's pronounced. Um, but yeah, the record attendance was 55,000. That was against Rangers in the UEFA Cup. Now, I don't think they'd be able to do that. Now, obviously, there'd be some safety concerns around getting that many numbers in. But like I say, from what I've heard from people over in Belfast and over in Northern Ireland, this is a place that lacked money in the Taylor Report. And by all accounts, a lot of clubs in Northern Ireland lack the funds to improve their infrastructure of their stadiums. There's a few stadiums in Belfast and in Northern Ireland in general that could really do um, with improving in terms of like some of the facilities and stuff, but I'm not saying that as a bad thing for this one. I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. And if they were to ever improve it, they have to keep some of these old touches. It's incredible in there. And it was built in 1892, making it probably the oldest stadium on this list, I want to say. Um, yeah, 1892. 
as old as Liverpool. I mentioned that in a video when I was there. So this stadium has been around for donkey's years. The very last one that I'll be talking about in this video is my most unique, most brilliant, most amazing stadium that I've ever been to and that I would recommend you to go to. And if I was to ever go to one in this list prior to me visiting any, I'd have chose it. So stick around and see what it is. And the next two coming up are very similar to it. We have three left. They're all very similar in their own ways. But first up out of these next three is Dumbarton, also known as The Rock, as you can see um, from the incredible rock that is behind it. It used to be an old volcano. And if you ever go up the rock, you can actually go up it and get an amazing view of the stadium from down below as well. It is a sensational game, a sensational place to watch a game of football. And every time I go there, I've been for a few matches now, I always get excited driving up to it and um, you always know you're gonna get some good views. There's a lot of stadiums in Scotland um, that do need a lot to be desired in terms of their design. And whilst this is quite a basic stadium, um, in terms of its facilities, it only has one stand um, and look it isn't obviously Dumbarton are a big club as well they actually did win the first two Scottish leagues that ever were but they have been in the lower leagues for a lot of years I do like Dumbarton as a club um, and I do think they have a good stadium in terms of you know the facilities and stuff but it is kind of basic and it does probably suit them at the level that they're at but the best thing about it is obviously the view you get when you're there yeah it has Dumbarton Castle right behind it but sadly if you're in the stand you'll never get a view of the castle um, I think they put the stand the other side because I believe this is true. I think someone told me that when I was there that um, if the stand was on the other side and you did get a view of the rock, I think the sun would be that side. So you just have the sun in your eyes the whole game. Whereas if they have the stand on the other side, they wouldn't have the sun in their eyes. But obviously the rock would be behind you. But that being said, if you ever do get the chance to go the other side of the stand, you can get a good picture or a good couple of clips or videos or whatever you'd want to do um, from the other side of the stand and of the rock and the castle as well. So you get that good view, etc. But yeah, I don't know. I think Dumbarton, obviously, they've got the space there to, I think, build other stands if they were ever to grow and sort of increase their stature as a club and they would need to increase their stadium. But um, I think that might be a little bit of a way off for them. But I'd love to see them do it. They're a historic club who, like I say, won the first two titles. Okay, the first they shared with Rangers, the second they won outright. They've never won the top tier ever again. They've won all the other tiers. They've won all four tiers of Scottish football. There's only one other team I think that can say that and that is Rangers I believe who when they went down um, all those years ago have now built their way back up and have won all, all the divisions. So um, yeah, incredibly unique stadium is Dumbarton. Would definitely recommend going there if you haven't been before. Next up is The Rock in Wales. Now are you starting to see the similarities between some of these last ones? Look at this. You can see how similar it is to Dumbarton Stadium. Yes, the home of Kevin Druids in the north of Wales, not far from Wrexham. They play in the Welsh pyramid system. I believe at the time of filming, they are currently in the second tier, um, but it is just unbelievable. I couldn't believe it when I went there. And I think somebody recommended for me to go there on Twitter or Instagram or something like that. Um, and yeah, I just, I turned up there and couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. Um, one of them stadiums that sort of takes your breath away, also known as The Rock. The record attendance is 1,854, although I think the capacity is 3,000. So this small stadium in Wales has an actually a bigger capacity than that of the one in Dumbarton in Scotland, amazingly enough. That is according to the internet here. But yeah, like I said, I don't know if they've ever had 3,000 in there. That is the only thing. But um, yeah, again, another one that when you walk up to it, when you find it, it sort of takes your breath away. It's in a small little town, sort of in the middle of nowhere. And then even like trying to find the stadium, driving up to it was quite hard and walking um, into it was like fairly hard to find, um, which made it even more fun to go there and like go ground hopping in Wales and see all these amazing cool stadiums. I was there visiting TNS and Wrexham. And again, like I say, I was there to see games and do like stadiums and stadium tours and like videos that sort of quote unquote bigger clubs. And then you sort of start to investigate the areas and then you find out there's this amazing rock stadium called Kevin Druids. Again, you show, tell me in the comments if there's any others like this, these rock stadiums anywhere else. I'd love to visit more of them, but this is Wales's version. And finally, probably the biggest team on this list in terms of sort of where they have played over the last 10, 20, 30 years um, and sort of getting into Europe and stuff is Braga. Obviously, I had to include Braga in this video and this is my ultimate unique stadium that I've ever been to. Like, I've heard about this stadium at first when I was about 15, maybe 16-ish, something like that, when um, Liverpool, my team, actually played Braga 
in the Europa League. And I remember the commentators calling it the quarry on TV and it's stuck with me ever since. I remember seeing it on the telly, seeing behind the goals and just being like, wow, I couldn't even believe at that age that a stadium like that existed. I just thought they were all, you know, especially the top tier ones, the European ones, you know, four stands, etc. Then I saw Liverpool play there and I just couldn't believe it on the TV. I was like, what is this place? It stuck with me ever since. Then I end up going there like 10, 12, whatever years later when I have this YouTube channel, um, probably before YouTube was even invented when I um, when I actually found out about it. I certainly didn't think of having a channel at that point. Um, but yeah, it's like, it comes around full circle like this. I've been there now, and now it's one of my most watched videos, my stadium tour anyway. I actually saw a game there as well, um, which also did really well. So a huge thanks to the Braga fans and the fans of weird and unique stadiums. But just look at it, it was built in 2003, so 20 years ago now in time for the Euros in 2004, which were obviously held in Portugal and won by Greece. It was constructed for about 83 million euros and they even had to use dynamite, dynamite, get that, to explode some of the quarry out so that they could like create the craters to actually build the stadium in. You actually walk up to it, you enter the stands from almost like roof height, certainly on one side, the side that I was stood on, there's what the other stand on the other side, you enter by like ground level, but the one that I was on, you enter by like the height of the roof and you walk down into like this huge bowl of the pitch there. Um, but yeah, absolutely amazing. They had to use dynamite. Some of the like architectural structures like and sort of um, construction techniques they had to use to build it are amazing as well. The big wires that go across the roof, they actually suspend the two stands together. So I think if you cut them wires, they're just like full off basically. They're what keep it up. There's no like pillars, there's no poles. It's obviously cut into that big quarry and built down below and these big wires keep the two stands together. It's absolutely amazing. It takes your breath away when you go. And like I say, it was always on my bucket list of places to see. I think this was my first foreign trip post-Covid when I went there as well. So I wanted to go somewhere cool, I wanted to go somewhere special, I wanted to go somewhere kind of open with the Covid rules as well because I think Portugal at that point was like one of the ones you could go to um, fairly easily without restrictions, especially when going to watch football. I went to see Braga play and went to do the tour as well. The best thing about the tour, it cost six euros as well. And some of the people on it were cool. I had two tour guides. One of the guys who welcomed me in as well was a really nice guy as well. So um, yeah, totally unique stadium in this sort of small-ish um, sort of northern Portuguese town. I think Porto is sort of the biggest city in that region. Obviously Lisbon is sort of middle of the country and you've got the Algarve in the south. But Braga is just like away from Porto a little bit. It's a smaller town, um, really, really nice place. It might be a city actually, but really, really nice place to sort of go and to visit anyway. But then when you consider that they have this incredibly unique stadium as well, just is this perfect recipe for a unique football stadium. I absolutely loved it and you have to visit it if you ever get the chance. What do you make of these unique stadiums? Have you ever been to any of them yourself? And do you have any other unique stadiums that I've not been to before that you would recommend to me like I've recommended to you in this video? If so, drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get there when I can. Obviously, this isn't an extensive list of every stadium in the world. I haven't been to every stadium in the world, but maybe one day we can um, do a secondary list of um, unique stadiums Stadiums. once I've been to a few more. I've got a few in my mind that I'm gonna keep quiet until I actually get to go to them. Um, but yeah, like I say, if you have any that you wanna drop in the comments, let me know and I'll do my best to get there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna leave two of the unique stadium videos on screen right now. Why don't you click on them to carry on watching and get a better sense of what it was like when I actually visited them. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.